but it's a time. It's time. It's yeah. just time. Yeah. Stand up is like MMA. Yeah. You know, I know you shot a special. Yes, sir. And I know you got a lot of shit from a lot of people. You know, you made me laugh with the special. I was very proud of you. Thank you, sir. Um, I mean, three, year, three years. Yeah, it's insane. Three years. So, and like three I years. told somebody, I go, I'm 56 years old. What if tomorrow the UFC called me and said, Joey, we want you to fight Dennis Siva? Because nobody knows how old Dennis Siva is. We have no idea. Talk. We have no idea. That guy, that guy well, I mean, kid. he's not around anymore, but that's a yeah, great reference. He was a janitor in Auschwitz. That yeah. dude, that throwing, dude, throwing, yeah. throwing spinning they, kicks down the hallway. They made him claw. They made him. He was old enough to sweep the joint. Like, Hitler was dead already. <sighs> but you can tell, like, he did construction at <laughs> yeah. Auschwitz. You know, you ever talk to him? He's like, that, that, that. He's Nazi <laughs> all the way. Dude. He's a Nazi from You ever see when he got in trouble for having, the, like, the German Nazi themed shirts? <laughs> yeah, no shit. What do you think he's doing? I think you jinxed him, Brendan. You said you're gonna say something crazy on the podcast the next. No, yeah. <laughs> Dennis Evers a Nazi yeah, boy. He's, back. A no, he's not around anymore. He's a great it's guy. well documented. He's a great guy. He's a <laughs> Nazi. Know, we don't know that. But yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He gave, I know he has a great spinning when, kick, when Joey. That's like, about it. When he fought, yeah, but when he spins kick, he leaves the Hitler hand up. <laughs> Did you ever see? Like some people use the, when you do a when you do a leg kick, your momentum comes from the arm. Right? When he does the thing, think of his spinning kick. He opens up with his eye Hitler, up with, this. with his eye Hitler, which gives him the momentum to throw that spinning ball around at him. Oh, powerful Nazi oh, heel kick. Oh, oh, that motherfucker don't even have a birth certificate. It's just and then what, what do they give you? The SWAT sticker with the SSR on yeah. it, or something like that. Oh. <laughs> Let's say right now you call me up. We go listen. We don't know how old Dennis Seaver is. Uh. Just drop down to 265. We're going to let you fight him. <laughs> drop down to 265. Yeah. He'll fight you at any weight, but you got to be 265. You can't be bigger <laughs> than Roy Nelson. Yeah. You got to fight at 265. Yeah. And you have six months to train. <laughs> yeah. No smokers. No IFL. You know, you were thrown into the weeds of debt, my friend. Oh, I, that's my entire and, career. And I love that about you. That yeah. They picked you up one day and they said, you're going to overlap MC and feature and just start headlining. Uh, it, it, well, I can see how you think that, Joey, but it, it was a little different than that because, remember, I was on the road with Callan for four years. Okay. So, so when most guys were doing open mics, I was doing 15, 20 minutes. I mean, you're talking for four years with Brian Callan opening up doing our live fight and the kids. How were you feeling then on stage? I mean, it was, you know, it's a, you're, you're you're new, but but that was in front. You know, my first stand up ever. My open mic was in Brea, Ontario. Sorry, Ontario, six hundred people sold out. So that was my first open mic. People go, ah, oh, that's your crowd. It's my crowd, but six hundred people expecting a show. So oh, yeah, your crowd for like two minutes. It's my crowd. Yeah, at first like, oh, this shop from the podcast. Well, you know how it is. Ask fucking Piven after three minutes. Yeah, that's guy from uh, you know Entourage. Yeah, no, but they're there to laugh. So after two, three minutes, you got, you got to do your shit. So I, I was thrown in this training camp. You know what I'm saying? This. So my open mics were torn, torn with talent. Took me under his wing, torn, 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 torn. And then I do a live find kid at the comedy store, and then they go, man, we'd love you to do a set in the belly room. And then it just starts going from there. Then I'm doing you know shit spots in the belly room and laugh factory. I'm doing Armenian night stuff like that. And then I think three, like two years into that, and then uh, you're Armenian. No, but wow. they thought I was. Oh, I think that's why they invited me. Oh, you were training over there with Abu Dhabi and fucking, fucking uh, the head movement with uh, what's yeah, the, yeah, uh, what's his Ronda's, name? Uh, yeah, yeah, Ronda's. yeah, 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 Dvorkin, whatever the fuck it is. But then, uh, and <laughs> He's then driving Uber, by the way. That makes sense. He picked me up the other day. <laughs> Uber Comfort. Uber airport. Comfort. He's an Uber Comfort. Uber Comfort. Did you know I trained on the lounge? <laughs> yeah, so I doing that, and then uh, Ari's show on This Is Not Happening. I remember they had auditions or something at the comedy store, and Justin, we had some I was agent. there. I was there. Yeah. I watched yeah. I loved then, it. Yeah, thank you. I yeah, yeah, I remember you like, yeah, yeah, you're like, this, yeah, is yeah, this is good. And then they, I did that. And then they went, I remember Comedy Central, whoever was running it, because Ari was already out. People think Ari was like, oh, Shab, be on the show. That's not how it went. They had those auditions. It happened that one, and then you you liked it. I remember Ari asked you to host, right? Right. And then they went, we like it, but it's just it's missing something. So I kept working on it, working on it. Then they had another audition for it, did it then. Again, we like it, we like it, it's missing something. And I'm trying to figure it out, and Bert. 
Kreischer. I'm, I'm forever in debt to Bert Kreischer. I fucking love that guy with all my heart. Bert uh, has me on his podcast. And then uh, some, he said, oh, someone was telling me about the story you did on this not happening. Tell it to me. Just tell it to me. Don't, I, just tell it to me how you're doing it. I tell him. And then he's like, man, you ever thought about this? Or what if you put this here? What if you put this here? I'm like, man, it's really, I didn't think of it like that. And he goes, think, I want you, to, don't think of it as a bit. Think of it as a story. It's story. actual story. Yeah. It's story. And then so took the notes from Burp, went back in the drawing board, comedy store, laugh factory, improv, bombing, right? People know who I am. They're bomb, bombing. Then I get that final. Uh, this is not happening. They go, there you go. And then I got that. Then I got that. And then just kept, kept, kept on keeping on there. But all the, all that stems is, is the, the Showtime special. Everything stemmed. The, the rock is that, is that bit that I done. This is not happening. Cause I toured with that for whatever, three and a half, you know, four years. How is the walk through the walk down the path to fighting compared to sitting in the back waiting for your name to be called. Is there any comparisons to that feeling? Not really. you're going to get punched yeah. in the face? No, people people think there's, I mean, you're talking fucking apples, avocados, man. I mean, in the back, I could train as hard as I want. I dot all my fucking T's. I'm, I'm sorry, dot my I's, cross my T's. I'm ready to go. But the guys I'm fighting are world class, man. Those motherfuckers are pretty good. So no matter how good I am, that guy might be better that night. And I'm fucking terrified. Even though I'm in the best shape of my life, I'm ready to go. We got the game plan. I do some things better than him. Shit happens. In comedy, I mean, you got to try new shit and you're going to bomb some nights. But in comedy, if you do it long enough, you keep going, keep going, you're working on your work. You can come up with 15 minutes that in general, you know that you get you pull that ace out of your fucking back pocket. With any crowd, it's going to be pretty funny. In fighting, there's no, that, I'm not pulling out you know no that fucking midget ace. that went off on the bagel shop? Yeah, that's what I <laughs> Right now, they want them to fight people. I can look oh, you in the Jesus face Christ. and tell the viewers for sure. If you contacted me and offered me a million dollars to fight that midget, I'd have to pay somebody two hundred grand to push me down. Like the, the, the I don't know how people do that. Uh, that walk to the octagon. Oh, it's the, the most terrifying thing, Joey, in, the, in the world. And that camera in front of me, I would not picture him this, Joey. The fuck out! Like, get that camera out of my Joey, face. Joey, picture this. So, uh, you're warming up in the back. And I, I was fortunate where I was fought, I guess fortunate, but I always had to wait. So let's say it's a 7 p.m. pay-per-view. All my fights were pay-per-view, at least main slots. I never went early. So I had to sit in the back in my fucking joggers oh, while you yeah, see a guy come in after. And then, and then you can see him before going, this is my moment. They go get knocked the fuck out, come back to the locker room. And you're just like, oh, man, all right. Oh. All right. And so you're waiting, and then your coaches go, all right, you're six fights away. Let's start warming up. And then you start warming up. They wrap your hands. That's when you knew it's real. And then what I would do, I'd always, I'd always look at the at the lineup. And it, it, the two fights before me, if it, they were smaller weight classes, I'd know typically it's going to go to decision. So I get some time. I got 30 minutes, five minutes between each fight. So I got about 45 minutes to warm up. I'm going to be good. If it's heavyweights, middleweights, or light heavyweights, better have your shit ready because someone's going to get knocked out pretty fast. So you don't you have no idea what's gonna happen. Wow. So I'd always be like, okay, I better start warming up a little harder, a little harder. And they're just pacing back and forth. And then, you know, it's like, what am, what am I doing? God, what am I doing? This is awful. This is awful. And then fire in the hole, Shab, you're up. And then you just you're walking. It's just like, and then it because it's his team there, there's a huge black curtain. You're you're walking through the arena. It's so it's so lonely. It's so fucking cold, man. And there's a black curtain, and usually their team would be in front of me there. And they're all talking. He's nervous, pacing back and forth. And then you're just there like, ah, here we go, man. Here we go. And then he walks out. His song plays. You hear him talking shit about knocking you out. And then the black curtain closes. And then the camera's in your face. And then your walkout music hits. And then you start walking. Hit that crowd. I would have a heart attack. Like I would I would probably, when I look at the My blood pressure's lineup, up right now. Talk yeah, about it. when I look at the lineup, when I saw my name, I would call a friend and go, Lee. <laughs> Meet me around the back in 10 minutes. But I can't get in. I don't give a fuck. Tell them I had an emergency. And I would tell Coach, Coach, I got to go to bed. I got to shit, cut these hand things off. Oh, I, there, there's I a would, fighter. I won't, I won't say his I name. I would run he, out of there. I, I would run out of there. We had the same manager. I won't say his name. Not that famous of a fighter, but a fighter who, before a fight, went, I don't want to do this. And the coach was like, what the fuck are you talking about? You yeah, have to yeah, do this. No, and he goes, nah, I'm good. Cut my fucking wraps off. They went, you have to. You signed up for this. You have to do this. He went, I don't want to do this. They talk him into it. 
he goes out there, you know, kind of just half-assed it and then got hit with the body and, and left. But they were telling him, like, if you don't go out there, you're you're ruined for the rest of your life. Your reputation, you have kids, you're just going to be that bitch who didn't go out there, man. But that goes to everyone's. I don't give a fuck who you are. Unless, oh, unless you're John Jones, who's, a, who's just a assassin or maybe Khan or someone or Nate Diaz or Jorge Masvidal, but no, there has you're, to if be you're fear. Right, there, there's always got to be fear, a little fear. But I don't think any one of them go because what I would do is when we're in the bus driving there and you're in traffic in you know I fought in New York, in New Jersey, I fought in Anaheim, and we go by these people, I just stare out and think of everything I'd rather be doing. I'd watch someone walk down the the, the street and I'd go, I would give any amount of money to be that person walk right now, and not have to fucking do this. Well, it blows my mind. A lot of fighters talk about taking naps in the locker room before their fight. Because you get drowsy because the, the adrenaline is so high and you yeah, don't yeah. sleep during the I week. get tired doing stand-up. Me too. Me too. During, I got to do Me too. A, 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 a secret. Joey D is secret. Here we go. <laughs> I do a four-shot espresso before I go to the comedy store. Four-shot? Cuban espresso. Yeah, but that's, isn't that a little bit different than... Then about to go fight? Like, I would think. No. Wow. Fear is fear. Uh, it, when I go to comedy, yeah. when the, you heard the story when I had to follow Megan Mooney. Megan, the, the, the cute girl that goes to the comedy store, the writer from Bisbee. And I went in oh, there yeah. and I fucking got an anxiety attack. And I went to Paulie Shaw. You did? Go, oh, my God. When was this, 18 Joey? 18 months ago. Wow. I get to the comedy store. I love store. hearing this. You know, that little, you know that little run up the fucking original room stairs? Yeah. I could do that 20 times, even though I'm a fat fuck. One day I'm in the back. Joey, you're next. Okay. I could walk. Hey, how you doing? Hey, it's a 10. How many steps from the kitchen to the fucking original room? Not 10, many. Yeah, not many. Seven? 15. Seven? And then I walked up those steps. When I got to the top steps, my lungs closed. I couldn't breathe. I'm watching Megan Mooney kill, and I'm like, fuck, I'm not good enough. What if I bombed the fucking comedy store? And I just started going off, and I started breathing. Weird. So I had to look around. And I saw the light come in from the outside by the door. And then I looked, and I could tell that the stairway, that's what saved me, the stairway. Yeah. So Paulie's back there. So I go, Paulie, Paulie, you might have to go up there right now. Something's happening. I'm getting like a heart attack or anxiety. And he goes, what are you talking about, bud? And I go, Paulie, just go, <laughs> the just go up there. And he goes, I already went up. I go, you're the only one that's here, and I'm about to have a fucking heart attack. Yeah. And I went up there. And I blacked out pretty much for twelve minutes. Have you had? Have, has this happened before, Joey? Never. What I, the fuck? And when I came out of it, I was up on stage. It looked like Las Vegas. There were bodies everywhere. It was one of the best sets I'd ever had in my Crazy, life. Crazy man. <laughs> and what, what, were you conscious of it while it was going on? No, not, really. not until about the light came on. Interesting. And I looked at them, and they looked at me, and they clapped. And I go, "Thank you for coming out, for coming up to the stage, such and such." And when I walked off, Paulie Shore looked at me and goes, you should have anxiety sets, anxiety That's funny. things more often. And I went on Rogan the next day and told him the truth. I go, that's the first time I, the anxiety oh, blocked I haven't me heard out. That. Wow, that's so crazy. So I went to the doctor and I got the pills. The anxiety pills? Fives, and I keep them in my drug pocket. Just in case you get one? When I go to have you ever had show. one doing, like, so that's the first one, you've, you've never had them before your shows? I had them lightly. But nothing crazy. Not to that extent. The, the, the only time I've been close to that, Joey, and I and I'm, I'm, I haven't been close to that, but on when was it? Tuesday night. Tuesday night at a spot in the belly room, spot in the main room. But spot in the belly room was 8.30, which, and it was just new material at night. That's whatever. And then had a spot in the main room, uh, but not till 10.30. So I'm watching the other comics. Um, Tony Rock went on just absolutely crushed. And Sebastian's uh, neck. And then Destroyed the uh, so it goes, main room. So it goes, Tony Rock. Sebastian, that's supposed to be Theo to close it out. I'm watching the show, and uh, Tony's just killing. It. I'm having such a good time. And then Sam and uh, someone else from the comedy store come through. Go, hey, Callan canceled, and Theo's running late. We need you to go on after Sebastian. Will you do, will you do three sets tonight? You know, what? You know, we need you to go on. It, it, we have no one to go after Sebastian. The, sh the the show's running short, so we need you to we need to extend it. We need you to do 15 minutes. I went, oh, yeah, no, in the head, I'm, oh, yeah, no problem. But inside, I'm like, Bong, fucking Sebastian, man. Sebastian. I got to follow that motherfucker tonight. Dude, and then I, no, I'm I, go, already I go in the back. Sleepy. And my, dude, my, <laughs> I'm, I'm sleepy talking I'm about sleepy it. Already, my hands so. were sweating. I, it's tough to make me real nervous. My hands were sweating. I was pacing in the back. 
that's the closest I've get. I I could feel my breathing was hindered, and that was the first time I was like, oh, I'm I'm having a partial little bit of anxiety right now. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? No. <laughs> I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, keep going went from where you told it. Cause then okay. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got? 